Well, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six tube testers, but none of them test compact drawns. I just bought a bunch of tubes, and a number of them are, have uh, compact drawn uh, pinouts, so I just purchased this guy here. It's an ICO uh, model 667. Um, which has the right tube sockets. Now, I've had this ICO 666 for a number of years and uh, it works great but just it tests the old tubes that I normally uh, work on uh, on old radios but not some of the newer ones. So I was able to buy this guy here off of eBay for about half what they normally run for because it was listed as uh, Parts only, not working. So I will have to dig into it to see what's wrong. But um, it does light up and the needle moves when you do the line test, but it doesn't go all the way over like it should. So I think it needs some adjustments and some cleanup. A lot of the uh, buttons are sticky and uh, everything's kind of kind of need some service. So when I worked on, I got this one, I remember I did some modifications to make it uh, safer, like put some diodes across the, uh, the meter to protect it. And I think there was one other mod that uh, was recommended. So I'll look that up on that one again and uh, work on this one, and do those mods, and see if we can get it working. I right, uh, just started to work on this ICO 667 and it's kind of a tip. Um, really the two major things uh, that you need to find out if, uh, what's, if it's working properly on these things uh, to see if they're restorable. Number one is the meter and you know if the meter moves then you know at least that's good. I'm just hitting a line test. And uh, another thing is the uh, transformer inside. Um, and off of the transformer, there's uh, you know all the filaments. There's little tabs off the transformer that uh, uh, set the voltages. So a quick way to test that is to get your meter set up on AC volts, and uh, just put the ground lead in any any lead, and then just pick a, a, a a pin that you want to use. I'll just pick one here and set it to two. Two is the uh, uh, heater current. So I'll just put this in. Well, I've got uh, pin one. So if I plug that into pin one, and you can see it's reading six volts on the 6.3 volts. What I'll do is set this on Z, which should be yeah you know, the regular line voltage, which is a uh, Looks like uh, it's right at about 123 right now. So I'll go ahead and set the uh, line adjustment to where that reads 123. Okay, so somewhere around there. This is a little out of adjustment. And you can see the line doesn't reach, line adjust doesn't reach, so there's definitely a line adjustment that needs to happen. Well, then we'll go ahead and check the taps off the uh, um, transformer. So 117, that should be 70, so it's 73. And the next click should be 50, that's 53. This should be 35, it's a little high on these, that should be 25, 19. 12.6, 9 9.6, 7.5, 6.3, 5, 4.7. So you can see all of these taps off of the uh, transformer seem to be working properly. They're all there. That's 2.5, 2, 1.4, 1 1.25. And uh, 0.625, and that should be zero. Yeah, whatever it is. Back to 6.3. So, looks like the transformer is good. Seems to be working properly. And 
and um, the meter's working. So uh, I think this thing is uh, pretty restorable. Like I said, uh, some of the controls are stiff. And I noticed that says that it should be a 1 amp fuse, and I pulled it out and it was a 3 amp fuse, so I'll need to drop that back to a 1 amp. But uh, looks like everything's functioning. So just needs some um, deoxid uh, treatment on all the controls and uh, probably some component replacements inside. Clean it up and get it to work. All right, I uh, popped this thing out and uh, flipped it over. So you see there's not a whole lot to these uh, ICO testers. Um, there's a couple of diodes and some capacitors in there, probably, which I will replace. Um, the roll chart was a little stiff, so I took a little uh, electronics lube and just lubricated the uh, axles here on both sides. And that loosened it up quite a bit, so it's, it's rolling pretty well now. So I'll go ahead and um, deoxid treat uh, a lot of the controls and uh, see if we can get them freed up. And then uh, take a look at some of the components. Okay, I've got the uh, ICO 667 pulled apart, looks pretty clean. I've cleaned all the uh, switches and stuff with the uh, deoxid cleaner. They're all freed up now. This guy here, which was the or is the plate uh, control, that was really really sticky, and I had to to get into it. You have to pull all these little tabs here uh, apart or open them up, and that lets you take the back of this thing off. And then I soaked that with uh, deoxid, got it all freed up, put it back together, and it's working properly. Now the line calibration is not working quite correctly. The needle's never going all the way to the center like it should when you hit the line um, calculation or line. What do they call it line calibration? Yeah, line adjustment knob. So what I have found is this. Is the adjustment for that and this uh, pot seems to be working just fine but there's a little resistor over here that connects the pot down to ground and that is supposed to be like a 270 ohm resistor and it is reading 348k so well that's what is two 270, 270K. It's reading uh, 348K. So I'm going to swap that out. I don't have the exact one, but here's a three, uh, 350. Or 250, I'm sorry, 250K instead of a 270. So I'll try putting that in there and see if uh, that makes the line calibration work properly. All right, here's the uh, calibration procedure on this uh, ICO 667. It's really uh, pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, what you're supposed to do is hook your voltmeter up to that uh, line adjust pot. To measure the voltage across it. You turn everything on, and it should read, they say, about 130 volts at the mid position of 120. Not sure why it's not supposed to read 120, but maybe because there's no tube in there and the voltage drops a little bit when you pop a tube in. So that's what the procedure says to do. And then they say to um, press the C, the cap button, and hook the cap up to the chassis. And then you adjust this pot right underneath here, which is, I think it's the R7 until you get a zero reading on that um, inter-element leakage test. See how it's swinging a little bit. So you adjust that right to zero. Right about there. Then you go ahead and press the line button and you adjust this uh, pot over here. I think it's R18. It's right down there. 
to where you get uh, you know a centered position on the line adjust which is kind of centered right there so and after those two line up um, you know, the things calibrated that's pretty much all there is to it so I did have to replace uh, one resistor on uh, series resistor on that uh, pot there because it had drifted like twice what it was supposed to be and then uh, there was a capacitor right down here too on uh, that adjust so I went ahead and replaced that it's a 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic and the one that I replaced had actually drifted up in value or it was up about 20 microfarads when I um, checked it so anyway it seems to be calibrated now and uh, I'll go ahead and put it back in its case and give it a test okay the ICO 667 uh, tube tester is all calibrated and back in its case I had to replace one resistor and one electrolytic capacitor and then went through the calibration procedure which is really very easy it just has to do with setting the line um, AC line adjustment and uh, the inner element leakage test it's just uh, two pots that you need to adjust so it seems to be matching up fairly well with this uh, ICO 666 that I have right now I've got a 65 tube in there and both of these are set up identically so let's see what I get here with this one it looks like about eh, right around 90 on the scale which 100 is supposed to be a, a, like a new tube or a good tube so let me move this over here same setup check the line still good and so on this one I'm reading just a little bit lower about 80 Two, four, six, eighty-six. So, you know, that's within ten percent, which is about all you can hope for on these things. So, uh, looks like the uh, two ICOs are working and compare relatively well. So, this one I'll be able to uh, test Novars and Compactrons, which I could not test on the six, six, six. And then on the 666, I can test the old tubes, the 4, 5, 6 pin, in addition to the standard uh, Loctols and Octols and 7 and 9 pin miniatures. So, the combination of these guys should be able to test just about everything.